Online videos, they may help your conversion more than you might imagine. Hi, I'm Daniel Burstein, Director of Editorial Content at Marketing Sherpa. We're here at the Marketing Sherpa Media Center at IRCE, and I'm joined now by Greg Barclay of Spark Fun Electronics. Uh, so Greg, you were telling me you have some pretty impressive conversion rates off of your videos. We do, yeah. Uh, so our videos convert to about 1.75 uh, is our conversion rate for the stuff on our site. So that means people who view a video directly on our site uh, and then buy something within that same session, in the same session visiting, visiting our site. So that doesn't take into account people who watch a video and come back later or watch a video and add something to their cart and come back and buy it later. It's just from that one session. So I'm sure that the number is much higher when you take into account all those other, other factors. And so what's your strategy for creating a good video? I mean, there are many different types of videos you could create, a pure tutorial, someone talking at the camera, a, a commercial, what, what do you guys do? Sure, yeah, so um, the main thing we do is product tutorial. So the stuff we sell are little electronic components. On their own, they don't often make sense. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to look at it and tell what it does. So we build little projects uh, that showcase how they work. But the main thing is we try to have fun with it. So just a few weeks ago, we built a, a claw machine that uses our robotic parts, but instead of just dispensing toys, it dispenses little bottles of alcohol. And uh, you know, we do, it's so fun, I guess, uh, is probably our main, our main goal. We just try to have fun with everything that we do. Um, yeah, and our audience seems to respond to that pretty well. And so there was one with some goggles, was that? Right, yeah, so uh, a few weeks ago, th we, we started carrying this new product called LiDAR, and it kind of works like radar. The, 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 the closer you get to it, uh, it can sense how far away things are, essentially. Uh, so we built these goggles uh, that could almost be applied to a real visual impairment sort of uh, scenario, but we just built an obstacle course out of you know little glass things that we got from uh, thrift stores. And uh, basically, he had to, one, one of our guys had to navigate through this obstacle course using the LiDAR uh, without being able to see. And obviously, it worked pretty well, but then, you know, there's fun, you get to see things get smashed in the process a little bit, too. All right, so let, let's take a quick look at the, that video. <laughs> Activating LiDAR. Commence disorientation. Okay, so looking at a video like that, what does it take to produce something like that? Okay, so uh, basically our, our process uh, is probably a little bit different from other production type companies, but what we do is we just get together, we, we look at the new products that are coming out or existing products that we have and we think how can we, how can we showcase this in an interesting way. So we have a meeting and we have three creative technologists who will take our products and build projects with them uh, like the one you just saw. And uh, we, we kind of brainstorm and come up with ideas and from there we do sort of a, a scripting and pre-production uh, process where we'll kind of come up with the stuff that we want, want to make sure that we talk about. Uh, but for the most part, it's a very loose format. We, a lot of these guys, they just know the, know the product so well. They build the projects themselves, so it's easy for them to talk about it. Uh, and then it's, in terms of uh, shooting and editing, we do things very, very quickly. So oftentimes, we'll, we'll, uh, the pre-production will take maybe a few days to put a project together, but the shooting and editing gets done just in a few hours. We have uh, you know, upwards of 10 or 15 products coming out a week, so we're constantly cranking out videos two to five a week, so our, our whole thing is speed. And the videos have a sort of a DIY feel to them uh, because they're cut together so quickly, but our audience seems to really appreciate that because it sort of relates to how they do things as well. And speaking of that DIY feel, the actual on-air talent are not really professional uh Actors, they're, they're your employees. Definitely not, yeah. Not professional actors at all. We do everything with just our guys. And it's not even just the people in our marketing department. We, we make videos with everyone in the building. So anyone on the production floor, if they get a new piece of equipment and we want to show it off on our site, we'll have the guys who run that equipment. They'll be the ones who talk about it. So it's all very genuine. Uh, it doesn't feel like we've hired anyone. And uh, when we go to you know other shows and stuff, people will recognize uh, these guys and you know they, they're like characters and our audience really relates to them. Very authentic too. I'm very authentic, yes. Yeah. So what type of investment does it take? We do things cheap. Uh, we do everything with uh, DSLRs and pretty uh, prosumer equipment I guess I would say. Um, so the, the, we can spend our resources uh, most effectively on the projects themselves. Um, yeah, DSLRs, simple audio equipment, you said you got your lights at Home Depot, I think? Yeah, we do. We, uh, we've, we, I built a white background rig that just uses all stuff from Home Depot, just compact, compact fluorescent bulbs, and um, anytime we have to build like a little one-off, we just try to do it as cheap as possible to keep that DIY feel, but also just make it so we can keep cranking out as many videos as we can. 
So it's very doable even for a small company. How big is uh, Sparkfun? Sparkfun is, uh, I think, about 130 employees now. Um, we did 30 million in sales uh, last year. So a small-ish company. We just built a new facility in Boulder, Colorado, though. Um, so it still has a small company feel, but we're growing all the time. And out of that, how many are dedicated to video? Uh, there's a team of about seven people, not, not shooting and editing video. Shooting, shooting and editing is me and a colleague of mine, but uh, the creative, we have three full-time creative technologists who are in charge of uh, building the actual projects. And then there's a few other people we pull from other departments, like our engineering department, and they sort of showcase more of the flagship products that we have. So yeah, about seven people is what it takes to put together two to five videos a week. Okay, so knowing what goes into those videos, let's take another look. This video, I think, is that claw machine you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, this one's the claw machine. Uh, this uses all uh, robotics parts that we carry, uh, the sliders at the top, and also the, the robotic claws themselves. Yeah, everything. We sell everything. There. Okay, let's take a look at that one. All of the motion is coordinated by a SparkFun breadboard, which is taking commands from one of our arcade joysticks. The whole thing's being powered by a discarded computer power supply unit because it supplies 12 volts for all of the motors and 5 volts for all of the logic. This claw machine works pretty similarly to the ones that you might see in an arcade. Uh, you use the joystick to move left and right, forward and backwards. Uh, unlike most claw machines though, you can steer this thing all over the place before you press the button to release the claw. Okay, so, so when we see that, like you said, I mean, it's a product tutorial, you're showing how the product works, but it's entertaining, it's fun, that's why, that's how you're getting people. Definitely, yeah, fun is, uh, we always, always think of fun first, I guess you'd say, it's in our name, Spark Fun Electronics, so we, we think, of, uh, there might be maybe more conventional uses for these products, but we try to think outside of the box a little bit and really just get people thinking about other ways to use this, this kind of stuff. And so you said there's a 1.75% percent conversion rate yeah. on the videos, but first you got to get people to watch the videos. Sure. It looks like you've built a community by making these entertaining videos, not making it was well, about your product, but it's not just about your product, it's about how to really enjoy it and have fun with it. Huh? Definitely. I never, I never wanted our videos to feel like commercials. I wanted them to feel like these are projects that we would build whether we were working there or not. Um, and I think that that's what our audience really responds to, because they're doing the same things that we are. All right, so last question. If you could give any tip to a company producing video, what is the most overlooked component of video? Uh, for, for everything I see, it's uh, the sound, actually. So uh, HD video is, is very easy to get into. You can buy good HD video cameras. Like I said, we use DSLRs that are very affordable, but a lot of times people don't think about the sound um, you know, as part of that whole process when they're purchasing equipment, and I think it can really suffer. You'll hear, you'll have great looking uh, video that just sounds like it was shot in a tin can. So investing in good audio equipment, it's not that much more expensive. These lav mics that we're wearing right now are uh, pretty affordable, and that's something I would always tell new people to consider when they're buying video equipment. Well, thank you for your tips, and hopefully this video is sounding very good to you, and you can get way more tips and tactics and marketing case studies and marketing industry data at marketingsherpa.com.